Today from the Hidden History, we're taking a look, at one of the most visited and photographed landmarks in Germany, the Brandenburg Gate. Located in Germany's capital, Berlin, this former city gate has stood here for over 230 years. Berlin's last remaining historical city gate, dating back to a time when the city had over a dozen gates for taxing goods coming in and out of the city. Two centuries ago when the gate was being built, Germany wasn't the unified country it is today. It was made up of various kingdoms of which Prussia was the most powerful. It was the Prussian king, Frederick William II who in 1788 asked his architect to build the Brandenburg Gate. His royal architect was Karl Gotthard Langhans, a self-taught architect who had risen to the high position of first director of the Royal Building Commission. Langhans broke away from the popular Rococo and Baroque style of the time, with its decorative, ornate and detailed flourishes and designed the Brandenburg Gate in the neoclassical style, characterized by simplicity, symmetry and grandeur. Basing it on the Propylia, the ancient entrance to the Acropolis in Athens, Greece. Completed in 1791, it had taken three years to complete, and stood on the site of the previous simpler gate and guardhouse. Gottfried Shadow, the artist behind the decorative reliefs and sculptures, topped off the gate two years later with a quadriga sculpture, a two-wheeled chariot, pulled by four horses carrying the goddess of peace. The gate itself was originally called the Peace Gate for a short time, but it didn't quite catch on. The Brandenburg Gate was intended to be a symbol of Berlin's unity and strength while serving as the grand entrance to the city, as well as marking the start of the road from Berlin, to the former capital town of the Brandenburg State. Tourists today are often surprised and comment on how small they feel standing next to it. Made of sandstone and standing 26 meters high, 65 meters long, and 11 meters deep, the gate has 12 columns and 6 piers, which divide it into 5 passages. The middle passage was for the royal court and the 4 narrower passages were for regular people. The Brandenburg Gate opens onto a square that connects to Unter den Linden, what was once one of Europe's most elegant boulevards. A street lined with linden trees, also known as lime or basswood in the west. The Brandenburg Gate has had a long and turbulent history and has always been a site of major events. In 1806, Napoleon invaded Berlin and as part of his triumphal procession, he removed the Quadriga sculpture from the gate and took it back to Paris as a war trophy. It was later returned after Napoleon was defeated eight years later. The Goddess of Peace was replaced with the Goddess of Victory, and an iron cross and a Prussian eagle were added to commemorate the victory. The square next to it was given the new name Parisier Platz, meaning Paris Square also in remembrance of Prussian conquest. When the Nazis came to power, they used the gate as their party symbol. The gate was badly damaged during the war, and the Quadriga had to be replaced. After the war Germany was divided into West and East. And Berlin, though in the east, was also divided in the same way. This led to the Berlin Wall going up in 1961, and the Brandenburg Gate found itself stranded in a no-man's land for almost 30 years, cut off from both sides until the Berlin Wall came down in 1989. The gate then took on a renewed significance, a symbol of a reunited country and of peace. Twenty years ago, it underwent an expensive restoration and has since continued to be a symbol of unity and peace, and one of the most beloved landmarks in Germany. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.